main point, main topic. For main topic, I will take a little bit uh, two, three minutes. But in the meantime, let me complete yeah, the yes, discussion sir. part. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, class, good evening. I hope you are good at home. Uh, so, as we completed last class, that is related to Kaniska. With the completion of Kaniska dynasty, as I told yesterday, that we are going to complete the ancient period because. Up to Kaniska, uh, 98, 97, yeah, yesterday a little bit confused about the uh, class regarding the time period of Kaniska. Or uh, to be frank, uh, historians also not in a uh, single opinion about the period of Kaniska. If you'll see the date of assassination of uh, Kaniska, it is a little bit uh, confusing for the historian also. Uh, no unanimity uh, among the historian or the scholars regarding the date of uh, accession of Kaniska. But anyhow, uh, Kaniska, no doubt, uh, must belong to the same period. And uh, in and around 58 BC, and uh, he completed during this um, AD. OK, anyhow. So after the Kaniska, as I told last class, that we had some regional uh, dynasties we were able to see, Cholas. Chalukyas, Kakatiyas, Haishalas, Rastrakuta, Pandya, so many. Oh, no, only one. Okay. Uh, yes, it's many, only one, I think. Aditi is joining, sir. Meanwhile, okay. I'll uh, talk to okay. the Okay, Okay, ma'am, no problem. I'm continuing. Aswini, is it audible, miss? Yeah, yeah, very clear, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, if you see the rural or the south uh, India, most of the countries, I mean, the most of the Indian part, the subcontinent, divided into several small, small fragments, uh, fragments uh, in related to Chola, Chalukya, Kaktiya, Haishala, that we are not going to discuss because uh, only Satavahana Kingdom one is there. Uh, that is one of the important. Uh, when our time allows, I will go through that. But now, AZ India, in, in, yeah, ancient India. We are going to complete another most important dynasty that is none other than Gupta dynasty. I hope it is clear. Am I right? Yes, Aswini. I hope it is uh, clearly, um, I clear that how and what part we are going to discuss. Today, if you'll see, yeah, very good. So today, if you'll see the Gupta dynasty and this Gupta dynasty is another important uh, dynasty in India during the early Indian civilization. Early India means in the BC, uh, BC we completed AD. We divided the history into two parts, BC and AD. That BCE now called as before common era, BCE. And AD is called as common era. AD is equivalent to common era. So nowadays uh, we are using this common era. So in the common era or the AD, the first prominent dynasty in India or important dynasty in India is none other than Gupta dynasty. So that Gupta dynasty we are going to uh, discuss now. Okay. So if you see the development or establishment of uh, Gupta dynasty, then we can see uh, first we have to go who was the founder of the Gupta dynasty. If you see the Gupta emperors uh, were known as the various yeah, side uh, titles and some of them, they were very prominent and they were very much uh, yeah, powerful also, right? Then our important is related to what type of, uh, yeah, how and from where, what is the source of Gupta dynasty? That is important. Let us know every part we are discussing, the source of the uh, chapter. So Gupta dynasty, if you'll see, we had a number of sources available to know about the Guptas, right? Uh, if you'll see, there are many sources for writing the history of the Guptas. First of all, literary sources we will see. Okay. Uh, very few minutes, I will try to complete the literary. The literary sources, among the literary sources, most important sources are Puranas. Puranas. Of course, uh, in one class, I told you 18 Puranas. Okay. Among those 18 Puranas, most of the Purana, the Vayu Purana, that uh, Brahmanda Purana, next the Machya Purana, Vishnu Purana, Bhagavat Purana, 
these are the most important puranas which uh, highlight the rule administration and description of these uh, rulers right yeah. along with the purana the puranas tell us chandragupta one ruled over the prayaga saketa saketa one area and magadha similarly puranas give us a detailed uh, description about different type of rain period during the Sam samudra gupta okay and the great half of his reign uh, his uh, yeah how he fought with the nagas bhakatakas and sakas sindhu and west punjab how the relation with these all area okay so these all are we able to get from the purana that is number one number two uh, dharma shastras also another useful information some during yeah you can write puranas second point you can note down dharma shastras okay third important source is none other than yeah kamandaka of niti sara kamandaka niti sara probably written by the chandragupta 2 by sikara one of the person of his uh, court sikara okay at the time of chandragupta 2 and the book name is uh, kamandaka Niti Sara, K A M A N D A K A, Kamandaka Niti Sara. Yes, class, uh, I hope you are noting down because uh, these are a little bit uh, important. Okay, Kamandaka Niti Sara, written by Sikara, who was a uh, poet of Chandragupta II's period. And from that also, we are getting a huge number of information regarding the Gupta dynasty. Similarly, uh, different type of Kavyas. Next is along with that, another most important is neither uh, none other than Mudra Rakhyasa. Visakhadatta. Uh, Visakhadatta. Please note down. These all are the important uh, objective point of view. Visakhadatta has written the author of Mudra Rakhyasa. So that is also one of the important source of uh, Gupta dynasty. Similarly, so many others are there. Uh, along with that, coins, if you'll see a lot of, yeah, during Gupta period. Uh, yeah, class, I hope those who join. Uh, just now we started the classes and I am explaining the source of the Gupta dynasty. Still, we didn't go to the rulers. I hope you are understanding. Next, another important source of uh, Gupta dynasty we are getting from the coins. Yeah, because the Gupta dynasty is the greatest uh, contribution <coughs> to the modern uh, history about the coins. Before coins, if you'll see Mudra Rakhya, I told, I hope you have written that. Uh, written by Mudra Rakhya, written by Bisakha Datta. Similarly, uh, a lot of useful information also available uh, from the Fayan. Yeah, may I have and some few more they join. Yeah, Fayan. Uh, F A H I N. Fayan, one of the Chinese traveler who visited India and he has written so many. Uh, he stayed in India for several times and he learned the Sanskrit. He visited different places. And he had a great contribution to the Indian history. Fayan, uh, C.U.K., uh, that is Huengsa, these are. So that is also one of the important sources. Another most important, another Chinese traveler. Yeah, this is important. I think, I-T-S-I-N-G, I think one of the, another Chinese traveler along with Fayan, uh, traveler India after the uh, death of Harsavadana. He had also great contribution regarding the Gupta dynasty. Along with these all authors or the uh, written uh, manuscript, we have another inscriptions. Uh, we have different type of inscription uh, during the Gupta. Copper inscription, eye hole inscription, Udegri cave inscription. Next most important source is, uh, yeah, Mehruli iron pillar inscription. Please note down, Udegri cave inscription. Only these words, if you write enough, Udayagiri cave inscription located in Mathura. Uh, similarly, most important, Mehruli, M-E-H-R-A-U-L-I, Mehruli Ion Pillar Inscription. This is also one of the most important. Uh, it indicates of the Chandraguptas, almost all the Chandragupta dynasty, most important nearby uh, Delhi. This is located, one of the important. Next, uh, another inscription is the Bhitari pillar inscription. <clears throat> Bhitari, B-H-I-T-A-R-I. Bhitari pillar inscription. 
Skandagupta. Tells about uh, about the Skandagupta. Yeah, these are different type of uh, authors and the inscriptions we got. Similarly, uh, yeah, in the exam they are asking about uh, this pillar. So Mehruli Iron Pillar. Uh, describe about this dynasty or even Mehruli Iron Pillar is located in this place. Uh, says about Guptas, like that place they are asking or some related to the inscription also. Sometimes they are giving the question, so we cannot ignore these alar. I hope you are uh, noting down. Uh, along with that, uh, another most important is different type of seal we able to get. A large number of seals we able to get uh, have been found from the, uh, yeah, Vaishali, next to Mujafar district. Uh, we have a number of seals of the related to um, Kumar Gupta, Chandra Gupta two different type of rulers we able to get. Next source of information is number of monuments. Gupta period is also a source of history that period uh, we able to get different type of monument. Uh, Mathura Center, Benares School of Art, Nalanda School of Nalanda School, uh, Gupta School of Art. Okay, Nalanda, we know that famous Nalanda. Okay, at the Kushinara. Next, uh, these are some of the temples, the Guptas, and they had a great contribution for Buddhism and Hinduism. This is also one of the most important source of, uh, yeah, during this Gupta period. Along with that, another most important source is coins. Yeah, very important because most of the Gupta period for the first time in India, we are able to see the Gupta rulers, they have only children, the class, uh, if you'll see the coins of the Gupta period, different type of coins are there. Of course, I will not explain few types of coins in the last, I will say, what type of coins they released. I'll say last class. So number of golden coins we are able to get during this period, okay? And that is also one of the important source of uh, Gupta dynasty. Chandragupta I and his queen, Kumar Devi, struck by Sun Samudra Gupta, number of coins they released, the gold coins, okay? These are important. Uh, similarly, so many de development we are able to get. Anyhow, let us see with these uh, source, let us know the uh, rulers. First, Gupta ruler, you can note down. So the first group, Gupta ruler, uh, yeah, along with that, so many Puranas also helpful. In the meantime, I will go to the Purana. If you'll see the origin and foundation of Gupta dynasty, the origin of the Gupta dynasty, yeah, I hope it is audible. If you'll see the origin of the Imperial Gupta family is warp of, uh, of security, the name Gupta occurs in the ancient Indian records, particularly in the Sunga and Satavahana periods. Uh, more detail we will not go about that. Once you remember the origin, the name Gupta, we are able to get from the Satavahana and Sunga dynasty. Sri Gupta, please note down. Sri Gupta, Sri, S-R-E-E -E or S-R-I, no problem. S-R-I, Sri Gupta, with the founder of Gupta dynasty on the ground of 40 Yojanas are equivalent to 200 English uh, yeah, 200 miles. Uh, this was, he was the first founder of Gupta dynasty. Let us go to the Sri Gupta. Uh, you can write Sri Gupta circa, circa means probably uh, approximately 240 to 280 AD. Now I hope you can identify or you can see the difference. Uh, till last class, what of the years I told, those are all the years I told in the decrease manner uh, because that is in the BCE. In the BCE, we are making uh, the years in the decrease manner. But whereas in the uh, AD, it is increased manner. Okay. I hope. Oh, no. Yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. I hope you are clear. It is clear, audible. So, Sri Gupta period, once you write the time period of Sri Gupta. 240, 240 AD to 280 AD, 280. Uh, Pune copper plate, Pune. Pune copper plate inscription of uh, Prabhavati Gupta described Sri Gupta as the 
Adi Raja of Gupta dynasty. Adi Raja means the uh, first or the beginning, starting Adi uh, Adi Raja of Gupta dynasty. Uh, in the Rudrapura Rudrapura copper uh, plate inscription also, it also says that Sri Gupta belongs to the Dharana Gotra. Leave it. That's not that much of important. In the Gupta records, the title of Maharaja is used by both Sri Gupta and Ghatachkocha Gupta. After the Sri Gupta, Ghatachkocha Gupta came. So Sri Gupta Maharaja, they use the title as the Maharaja. Okay, I hope you understood that Gupta. After the Gupta, no, Sri Gupta, Ghatachkocha, and Ghatachkocha has been described. No need to write, just you listen and just write Ghatachkocha enough. Uh, Ghatachkocha described as the Gupta records, son of, uh, and son and successor of Sri Gupta. After anyhow, Ghatachkocha and all this, they are not important. After the Ghatachkocha, yeah, the strong, powerful ruler is none other than Chandra Gupta. One, note down, please. Chandragupta one. Chandragupta one ruled India between three hundred nineteen A.D. to three hundred thirty-five A.D. Chandragupta one. Please note down. Chandragupta one. Three one nine A.D. to three three five A.D. It is also noted that while Sri Gupta and Ghatachkocha are described as a Maharaja. Chandragupta I has been described as a Maharaja Raja. Yeah, Chandragupta I title you can write Maharaja Raja or, oh no, Maharaja Raja means king of the kings. It goes without any saying that our title Maharaja Raja must have been acquired by him as a result of his conquest. Okay. Uh, this is the Chandragupta one. If you'll see the Chandragupta one, simple uh, drop the title after having different type of words and uh, different type of words it indicates. After the Chandragupta one, if you'll see, after the Chandragupta one, another most important ruler of the Gupta dynasty, please note down, Samudra Gupta. Parakrama, Samudra Gupta, Parakrama. Uh, this Samudra Gupta ruled between, please note down, 335 AD to 375 AD. After Chandra Gupta, Samudra Gupta, 335 AD, or you can write as a common era CE also, no problem, uh, which is you can remember, you can, okay, but in exam, Definitely, you are going to get now CE, not AD. Common era CE, you are going to get. So it is better to, uh, yeah, have you settled with the CE. Samudra Gupta, about the Samudra Gupta, we able to get, yeah, I hope you have written the dates also, the year, rain period, the ruling period of Samudra Gupta, 335 AD or CE to 375 CE. We able to get a lot of information about Samudra Gupta from the Allahabad pillar inscription. It is addition to the large number of coins, Allahabad pillar inscription, most important source of the information for the rain period of Samudra Gupta. And this inscription is one of the uh, pillar inscription of Osaka, once I told you. So in that pillar inscription of Osaka, three rulers we will get. Top one is the Osaka, middle is the Samudra Gupta, and down part we will get the Chandra Gupta too. So that pillar inscription stands for the Allahabad pillar inscription. Uh, originally, it is uh, place of Kausambi. We are able to get the three rulers uh, information in that pillar inscription. The author of the pillar, Allahabad pillar inscription classified the campaigns of the Samudra Gupta categorically under four heads. He divided into four parts. Uh, in during his first inscription, first division, uh, he had different type of verse. It is in the poem. It is written. Anyhow, that detail we are not going because it is given that four divisions are given uh, with whom he had fought a lot of wars and all these things are given. Uh, you will little bit ignore to that. But once you listen, I hope 
uh, you are uh, listening and writing if you'll see the now no need to write just a few words i will say try to remember that's all if you'll see the allahabad uh, pillar inscription the lines of 13 of the allahabad uh, pillar inscription it says that samudra gupta defeated three kings in the northern india namely akshaya naga nagasena and the ganapati naga so these are the how he expanded his throne by the different words that we able to get along with that the allahabad pillar inscription line number 21 says the names of other rulers with whom samudra gupta fought after the campaign in the south india so this allahabad pillar inscription uh, clearly indicates about various wars of samudra gupta uh, detail we are not going okay how he fought with the um, vyagra raja of mahakantraka next mahendra of koshala mahendra giri of prataparudra and so many rulers in the south india okay ugrasena next korava so many rulers anyhow that all we are not going to discuss because it will take a lot of time so now pillar inscription alavad pillar inscription uh, one of the important source as we know that after the uh, samudra gupta who came to power that is another important samudra gupta is famous for his conquest and that is why he is being given the title of indian napoleon this is very important once in exam uh, in our orissa civil service exam i came uh, i i met with this question who was considered which indian ruler was considered as the indian napoleon uh, they gave this question i faced this question also so important please note down uh, samudra gupta was considered as a uh, given the title of indian napoleon okay he conquested many wars and all this after uh, samudra gupta uh, who is a ruler if you'll see uh, samudra gupta lot of wars and all this uh, class you can't uh, we can't complete all these wars uh, within this anyhow after the samudra gupta if you'll see another most important uh, ruler is none other than chandra gupta uh, two or vikramaditya after the Sam samudra gupta next ruler if you'll see after the war rules administration everything i will say uh, that is in one period okay uh, in that we will cover the samudra gupta how he ruled because the um, gupta dynasty administration is almost the same almost all the gupta rulers they followed the same administration by the time we can cover uh, the yeah rules and administration no need to write, uh, read individually about the chandra gupta one chandra gupta two like that so entire Gupta dynasty administration, when we will read, by that time we can cover the Samudra Gupta's uh, administration system. Uh, next, after the Samudra Gupta, Chandra Gupta II. May I get it from someone? Are you writing? Uh, if you are writing, I hope you might have written that uh, Chandra Gupta, uh, Samudra, uh, Samudra Gupta's reign period ends in the year. So now Chandra Gupta 2, you can start from that year. May I get it? Which year uh, Samudra Gupta's reign period completed? May I get it? Anyone has written? I think you are writing. Yes, students, okay. please, write, please respond. Yes, one. It is only one sided. <laughs> of course, we have less time yes. for discussion. Yeah, Snehvi, ma'am. Did you written? Did you write? Yes, sir. Anyway, yes, sir. Samudra Gupta. 375. Very good. 335 AD to 375 AD. Very good. Uh, are you unable to interact children um, because of less time? That doesn't mean that you will not write. Please uh, continue that. Okay. Uh, so, Chandra Gupta 2. We can write Chandra Gupta 2, 375 AD to 414 AD continuation okay uh, so many rulers are there but now we are reading this uh, prominent rulers chandra gupta 2 now we came on uh, this chandra gupta 2 once again i am telling the year 375 ad because vikram uh, samudra gupta completed up to 375 ad after that chandra gupta 2 starts his reign period 375 ad to 414 ad 
uh, our knowledge about the chandragupta 2 derived from inscriptions coins and account of indian given by payan and mathura pillar of inscription mathura pillar of inscription this is now in uttar pradesh okay and the year near about 61 years of gupta era uh, established by the 61 year of gupta era of 380 chandragupta 2 as the 375 ad and last known as the chandragupta 2 is a year of 93 uh, years uh, different type of records they are giving he he also one of the greatest ruler chandragupta 2 issued many type of coins this credit of golden coin in india goes to gupta period okay so chandragupta 2 issued many type of coins such as archer type of coins chaitra type of coins lion styled coins different type of coins he has given and uh, Chandragupta II, also known as a Vikramaditya. Chandragupta II or Vikramaditya. Samudra Gupta, Vikramaditya. So no need to confuse. Chandragupta II, also known as a Vikramaditya. Narendra Chandra Simha. Chandra, next Narendra Simha. Simha Vikramaditya. These are some of the titles used by Chandragupta II. There are lot of information about the Chandragupta II. He was not only a warrior; he conquested number of military achievement. Along with that, he himself was a good uh, poet, and he also know how to uh, vina and some of the coins. Uh, Fayan, if you'll see Fayan during the reign period of Chandragupta II, uh, India was visited by the Fayan. F A H I N. Please note down. Very very important. the chinese traveler fayan visited to india during yeah chandragupta 2 period most important the chinese traveler can you, can you spell it again sir please please okay fayan f a h i e n okay sir in ancient time up to harshavardhan we have uh, able to get a lot of chinese traveler it may be fayan it may be huang sa it may be megasthenes these all uh, chinese rulers they came they settled down in india they learned yeah most of them they studied yeah huang sa and fayan even they studied in the uh, nalanda university by that time they learned the sanskrit uh, to learn the sanskrit they particularly they took 2 to 3 years they visited north to south a ample uh, yeah uh, hand written do Document which is called as that is yeah manuscripts we able to get um Payan Payan Huangsa uh, Megasthenes Indica Huangsa C U K the book written by Huangsa was called as C U K all about India similarly this Payan we are discussing anyhow Payan I hope you have written F A H I E N three hundred ninety nine to four hundred eleven he stayed in India he came to India by the land or route and uh, Uh, went back by the sea route on his journey he passed through near about uh, 30 countries he spent 6 years on travel uh, ceylon another 6 year on study in india okay study in india means near about 3 years he had taken writing and speaking of sanskrit and copying out different type of books about the rulers about the india his main objective in coming india was to get the buddhist books and the discipline which he particularly unknown to the chinese people for the spread up anyhow so this was one of the greatest contribution fayan visited san sahan where he saw 400000 buddhist uh, places he visited again i am uh, repeating again again i am repeating fayan visited shan san s h a n hyphen s h a n san san it was one of the buddhist uh, yeah um, hinayana school in india where he able to meet near about 4000 buddhists were studied similarly several places another place he saw uh, that is nearby mathura mahayana buddhism there he met with 3000 buddhist monk like that throughout india he visited anyhow fayan tells us that 
the reign period of south of mathura was called as the middle of kingdom middle kingdom in geography also we know that malwa plateau so that malwa plateau comes under this middle uh, kingdom during the gupta period okay so payan's account also one of the most important uh, if you'll see the chandragupta he also one of the good ruler and uh, very much um, pataliputra was considered as a place of uh, um, learning by that time and he says that gaya pataliputra next um, different type of other north indian places uh, important places for the uh, source of learning they spread different type of um, books kapla was also given important during uh, fayan's visit right and after the uh, yeah chandragupta 2 if you'll see uh, then we able to get uh, another uh, yeah after the chandragupta 2 we are getting the kumara gupta uh, they are not that much of important only Uh, up to samudra gupta only important kumara gupta 1 415 to 455 and after that small small rulers they able to came narsimha gupta next the kumara gupta 2 anyhow we are not going to in detail of, about all these uh, later on um, gupta rulers but most important is what was the cause for the downfall of gupta empire if you will see the gupta empire which was uh, built by the bravery samudra gupta and chandra gupta too that entire credit go to these two rulers only samudra gupta and the chandra gupta too vikramaditya began to decline and ultimately collapsed um, at the 6th century ad near about 6th century ad and decline and fall of the gupta empire had different type of causes because uh, later on those rulers who came they were not uh, able to maintain that vast empire other local rulers became more prominent they are un- unable to uh, yeah maintain the unity and administration was little bit uh, weak and uh, the local leaders who were worked under the guptas they declared themselves independent rulers that was one of the most important cause for the downfall of gupta dynasty okay so let us see uh, as we didn't read individually about the uh, rulers now let us complete what was the gupta dynasty or what was the administration system of gupta dynasty in brief we will discuss so uh, in this point whatever now i am explaining it is consist of entire gupta i told introduction of individual rulers now all these rulers during gupta dynasty how do they ruled india or how did they rule india that we are going to discuss first of all Gupta dynasty if you'll see there was a republic i hope you know that republic means though monarchy was a uh, uh, prevailing but they followed the principle of republic i hope you know the republic on uh, the form of government in which uh, elected had the kings were uh, king or the monarchism but they followed the republican for- form of government next one if you'll see monarchy the theory of uh, divinity of the king was a um, yeah popular during this gupta dynasty samudra gupta declared as a god who had came to live upon the earth yeah uh, divine theory of the right okay uh, divine theory they believed that also the gupta emperor known by various titles some of them who uh, parama devata they declared themselves as a king parama devata parama bhattaraka maharaja di raja next i hope if you are writing parama devata parama bhattaraka maharaja di raja prithvi pala prithvi pala means the ruler of the uh, earth like that uh, different uh, titles they have taken samrat next ekadhi raja chakravarti such type of titles were taken by these gupta rulers the gupta king enjoyed a large number of power those powers covered the political administrative military judiciary uh, next uh, very often they were their own commanders so all the powers centralized system of government they uh, kept with them okay even uh, we able to get some of the uh, information from that is none other than the harsha charita of banavatta he also says about the uh, administration system about the uh, senapati 
uh, Senapati was the head of the army that all point we able to get from the Harsha Charita of Banavata. The king's council consists of different type of ministers come on. Kalidas refers that Mantri Parishad. Uh, the king's council was called as a Mantri Parishad and they uh, distributed several power to different uh, officers. Okay, that all uh, is now we are following the same type of officers. Similarly, there was a revenue officer, police officer, okay, military officer, like that. Another most important inscription, Junagad rock inscription of Skandagupta tells us that uh, he was appointed to protect all the countries. Okay, they were called as a Gopitrin. Gopitrin means that uh, local rulers were appointed by them. Kalidasa also refers such officials in the Malavika Agnimitram. Yesterday we discussed about Kalidasa Malavika Agnimitram. So in that also we able to get few uh, contribution of Gupta dynasty. So Junagad rock inscription and Kalidas Malak, Malavika Agnimitram both says the same type of rulers. Okay, judicial officials and all, all this we able to get. Uh, along with that, so many uh, punishment also, severe punishment they used to follow. As a result, uh, hardly any crime we able to see that. Uh, district administration, as now we are having, the administration is divided into several powers. Uh, provincial administration, district administration, city administration, village administration. So what is this? These are the present source of local cell government. Uh, now we are following in India local cell government now. So that type of local cell government also they uh, followed in the name of district administration, Jilla Parishad, we can say. City administration, uh, yeah, we can say that is the municipality corporation, municipality council. Village administration, we can refer Gram Panchayat, Mandal Parishad, uh, Jilla Parishad, whatever we are having at present, uh, local cell government. This type of local cell government existed during the Gupta dynasty also, okay? Uh, so class, if you'll see, the contribution of Gupta dynasty to other, along with this administration, uh, work are the important, most important contribution of the Gupta dynasty is none other than, yeah, till the Gupta dynasty we have seen, uh, in last classes also you might have seen and you might have observed that uh, after the beginning of uh, Gautam Buddha and Jainism, we did not discuss uh, any other religion in India, particularly in India, okay? So, this Buddhism and Jainism completely dominated in India till this Gupta dynasty. The credit goes to Gupta dynasty for the revival of Hindu dynasty. Once again, we able to get the revival of Hindu dynasty. Uh, Ma'am, I think it is uh, one minute left over. Sir, shall we join again? Yeah, ma'am, just Please. one minute is left yeah, over. Right. Please join okay. again, students.